All right, so we're going to give this an initial velocity of 20 meters per second. And let's give it a height of 15 meters. Here are the questions. So we want to know how much time it's in the air. And that's going to be the time as measured from this point all the way down to this point. We're going to call this time t. How far does it travel? That's an easy question. It travels this distance over here. And again, that's going to be measured from the edge of the cliff. And again, what's its final velocity? Well, its final velocity is going to be down here, right the instant before it hits the ground. And it's going to be moving at some velocity v. It's going to be different than 20 meters per second. All right? Once you're down over here, you're going to have two components. We're going to have an x component that we're going to have to find. And we're also going to have a y component because the object's been falling through the air. So the next step now is simply setting up the equations and then seeing how you perform the algebra in order to solve these problems. So let's go ahead and do that. So our first question is how much time is it in the air? The first thing I want us to notice is this figure here on the right hand side. It shows a projectile launched with some horizontal speed. Initially this is the yellow case. And the pink case here is where it's simply dropped horizontal, uh, vertically. These horizontal lines here, the green lines, represent same instance in time. And one thing we notice is this is time zero when they're both launched up here. They both get to the bottom. They both take the same amount of time to go from their initial position down to their bottom position, even though they've taken a different trajectory. Okay. Time is the same for both. And this is going to be an important uh, point to use in this problem. Okay, so let's remember that and let's set up our equations now. All right, step one in all of these problems is to define a coordinate system. Here I'm going to use just a standard x, y coordinate system. And I'm going to pick <coughs> the zero position to be x equals to zero right at the base uh, of the cliff. And also I'm going to set y equals to zero right at this position. You're free to kind of set it wherever you want. But for these types of problems, this is probably the best place to start. The next thing we want to do is look at what's going on in the x direction and the y direction separately. Okay, we're really interested in three variables for each case. One, I want to know what is the x position and what is the y position. That gives me my coordinate. I'm also interested in what the x component of the velocity is for every single time and what is the vertical component of the velocity. And also, let's just, for completeness, also write what the acceleration is in each direction. In all of these problems, you can assume that the acceleration, or the magnitude, the acceleration is given by little g, 9.8 meters per second squared. And we also know that the direction of little g is always the same. It's always down. Anywhere you look on this trajectory, the acceleration is in the y direction only. So that allows us to really simplify these equations because the acceleration in the x direction is zero. The acceleration in the y direction, if I write it in terms of little g, I can simply write it as negative because it's pointing down and that's what I've defined to be the, uh, the negative direction and multiplied by ni our 9.8 meters per second squared. Now the velocity in the x direction, well this one's easy now. Since the acceleration is zero, that means that the velocity doesn't change. So in the x direction, it's always v0. In the y direction, uh, typically you have something like this. You have an initial velocity in the y direction. I'll come back to that point in a minute. And then there's an acceleration term, plus acceleration times time. Now for this particular problem, this is pretty easy because this term here is 0, and my acceleration is given by the equation down here. So we can immediately sim simplify this equation to be minus little g times time. All right, now we're going back to our x position and my y position of this projectile for every single time. Well, in this case, it's pretty simple. Um, it's going to be the initial velocity times time. There's no acceleration term. And that's it. We're done for the x direction. That one's the easier one. In the y direction, uh, the equation is also pretty simple. We don't have to worry about the initial velocity term because it's zero for these types of problems. So all you really have to do is put my initial position, y0, 
And there's also an acceleration term, and that acceleration term is going to look like this. Now, the negative sign comes from the fact that the acceleration is negative. Okay. And this is just the standard uh, term, the quadratic term in time. Okay, so there we go. We've set everything up. Now, all we have to do is go back and analyze the problem. All right, so I've set y equals to 0 here at the bottom. So in order to analyze the motion for the time, um, well, what do we know about time? Time shows up in really three of the equations over here. If we tried to use the x displacement, what you're going to find is um, at our final time here, right before it hits the ground, we don't really know how far it went. So we don't know what x is, and we also don't know what time is. So we're a little bit stuck. However, if I use my equation for the y displacement, I do know the final y position here when I'm right here at the bottom. It's going to be 0. So it's best to use my equation here in order to find uh, how much time it takes to go to the bottom. So my final position is going to be 0. The initial position for this problem is h. We'll substitute the values in just a minute. Minus 1 half little g times t squared. All we have to do now is isolate. T is the only unknown in this equation. So if we isolate for time, I bring h on the other side. I'm going to get minus h minus 1 half gt squared. You can multiply by 2 both sides and divide by little g. And you're left with t at the end of the day is simply going to be 2 times the height divided by little g and take the square root of that. Now I'll go ahead and substitute the values in here. This is 2 times 15. That was my initial height in the problem, divided by my 9.8. All right, if you substitute all the numbers here, I think I get about 1.75 seconds. So that's how much time it takes for me to go up here all the way down to the bottom. All right, question two was how far does it travel, all right? And this is really asking for this distance over here. What is this distance x that the projectile travels as measured from the base of the cliff? So that's pretty easy because this is just automatically telling us we should use this equation over here. This gives us how far it goes for every single time. And the expression is simply v0 times t. Now v0 is 20. Now which time do I use? Well, I put the time when the projectile is down here right at the bottom. That's the time I just solved in the previous section. 1.75. Uh, so plug that in your calculator. Uh, you should get about 35 meters. Okay. So my distance x here is 35. All right. Then in the last section, I want to know what is the final velocity. Well, that's the velocity again when I'm going to be right at this point. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw it down over here. Once you're at this point here you're kind of, if I'm going to plot what the direction of the velocity is, you should plot a vector that is tangent to the curve. So if I just move it over, the velocity should look like this. And we know at that point we have an x component, which I'll draw like this. And we also have a y component, right? The y component is going down. So if I'm able to solve for both of those components, then I should be able to solve for what the final velocity is. I'm also probably going to need to define what this angle is here, say with respect to the horizontal. So the first thing we do is, well, let's find what the horizontal velocity is, vx. We have an equation for vx right here. vx is simply the initial velocity. It's simply 20. Really easy. vy, I have an equation for vy. All right, here's my equation for vy simply minus 9.8. Notice the negative sign? That reminds me that it's going down and multiplied by the time. And it's the time when it's right before it hits the ground, which we solve for, 1.75 seconds. If you plug that in your calculator, I think I got 17.2 meters per second. Now we're not quite done here. We're really asking for what v is. So all you have to do here is use Pythagorean theorem. Since we know both components, vx squared plus vy squared. Substitute this in your calculator. We get 20 squared plus 17.2 squared. 
and the magnitude of the final velocity is 26.3 meters per second. Now I'm not quite done, I still have to find the angle, however I do know both components. So you can just, you, actually, and you also know the length of hypotenuse here. So if I just use any of the trigonometric relationships, I'll just use this one, over the x. So the angle theta, simply tan minus 1 of vy over vx. And I know both components. Right? vy was 17.2. Vx is 20, substitute that in my calculator, I get an angle of 40.7 degrees. Okay, so there you have it folks. This is kind of a standard problem for launching an object horizontally and all the associated questions um, that come with these types of problems. Thanks for watching, consider subscribing to my channel and please like the video and if you have any other questions, don't hesitate uh, to send me an email.